Um, okay, and then here, Jesus motivates us to pray by His promises. Matthew 6, 6, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Verse 8, Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask Him. So here, uh, let me explain this passage first. This passage talks about that uh, when we go to the inner room, and when we cut, shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret place, your Father sees you in secret and rewards you openly. What that means is, God sees our inner life. God sees how much we treasure Him. God sees how much we, we build up the relationship with, uh, with God. So God sees all this. God is happy with us. Um, and then whenever we have this prayer life, this personal prayer life, God is very happy. It's a personal prayer life. It's not, it's not just praying when people are present with us, but we pray ourselves. And also, you know, your Father knows the things you have need of. He knows our needs before you, we ask Him. So He knows our needs. He cares about us. So uh, he, He's all-knowing. He's all-caring. And He is prosperous. He can give us all these blessings. Okay, so I explained this passage that God sees our prayer, and God will respond and re re uh, reward us. And also He... He knows our needs, so he, He's all-knowing, and He can give us strength and power to bless us. Okay, so um, for the message, so what a negative example. Now some people just want to pray in front of people, or they just don't pray. They don't believe that God hears the prayer. They don't believe that God knows the, the needs. So they, they, when they pray, they, they, they worry. They worry that God will not listen to them. So that is not, you know, trusting in God. That's not having faith. And then, uh, and then the uh, positive uh, example are people who knows that God is rewarding them. God is full of blessings. God has all kinds of blessings. God wants to reward us. He knows our needs already. So when we love Him, for those, you know, God prepare for us, for those who love Him, things eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human eye, mind cannot think of. So when we believe that He loves us, uh, that, uh, that when we love Him, He will bless us with all kinds of blessings, unimaginable blessings. So then we have confidence to pray to Him. So this is positive example. The reason why we have the negative example is to tell people that uh, we need to repent. And we do have these weaknesses. Now, I, I talk about motivation by grace. It doesn't mean I don't talk about the law. I do talk about the law. But my main motivation is with God's grace. Okay, and then uh, God's nature. He is, you know, oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I was talking about uh, warning. So when people don't trust in God, they don't pray to God, they don't, when they pray, they don't believe that God is blessing them. When they pray to God, they don't really believe that uh, God is providing for them. Then they, uh, then they don't, you know, they don't have confidence. Then when we, people have, don't have faith, the prayer doesn't have much power. Okay, and then how? How? The first how is to clear the garbage. The garbage of not believing in God. So if we don't believe in God, we need to repent and say, Lord, please forgive me. Please wash me clean with your blood. I Help me to trust in you that you're almighty. You, cares, you care about me. You know my need be already before I pray to you. So you know all my needs. You know everything. So we trust in God. So we uh, uh, first clear the garbage. Second, from the Bible we know that God is, you know, He's a, re a God who rewards us. He, ha he knows everything and He has a wonderful plan in our lives. Therefore, we relax and we trust in Him. 
we obey Him, we serve Him, we follow Him, we are happy to follow Him. So we trust in, we believe in God's goodness. So that's very important that we really uh, believe that God is a loving God. And then we learn to pray from our spirit, to worship in spirit and truth, and believe that God wants to bless us. God has all kinds of wonderful blessings. God wants to do wonderful things in our life. God uh, wants to, you know, He has wonderful plan to bless our life. Therefore, we can relax in Him and trust in Him and pray to Him with confidence. Okay, I'm sorry, excuse me for a moment. Okay, the how is how to build up, build up a, a good prayerful life. And also, whenever God responds to our prayer, we remember it. When we pray for people and they experience the power of God, the blessings of God, we remember it. And we say God responds to us. Or when we pray for some of our needs and God responds to us. And we remember how God blesses us. And we res remember that. And then that will give us strength and faith in God to believe in Him and trust in Him and not to be affected by you know, our lack of faith that we have faith in Him. Okay, So this passage is talking about faith in the God who provides for us. Okay. Now here, God motivates us to have a close relationship with Him. James 4, 8, Come near to me and I will, He will come near to you. And John 15, 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me I, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. So, uh, come near to God and he will come near to you. So I just explained this passage here that God responds to us. Whenever we come to him, uh, of course with a sincere heart that we, we worship God and we love God, God is very happy and He'll for sure come near to us. And then He's the vine, we are the branches, and when we abide in Him, that we live in Him, we have a living relationship with Him, then He'll stay in us, and then we'll bear much fruit. Because where, wherever He is, He'll bear much fruit, He'll produce fruit. And then without Him, we can do nothing. So, uh, of course, what Jesus means is that we cannot do anything that's eternal. Without Him, we cannot do anything that has eternal value. Of course, people can do things like they can build houses, they can uh, plant crops, they can do all kinds of things. But the point is, uh, they cannot do anything with eternal value without Jesus. It's only when we have a living relationship with Jesus that we can bear much fruit. Okay. So, uh, negative examples. Negative examples is that many people don't have a close relationship with God and they don't think God is close to them. Many people say, oh God, you're far away from me. Because they rely on feeling only. And also they don't, you know, they just think about their needs. They think about the negative things all the time. When they think about the negative things all the time, then they are controlled by the burdens. They are held down by the burdens. And so they don't have strength from God. Or when they pray, it's just a shopping list to God. It just they give just give God a shop, shopping list. Then the whole life is just, you know, just living by themselves. Even though they are Christian, they live by themselves, so they don't have much strength. And then, uh, uh, and then the negative examples of people who don't abide in Jesus is, uh, they they just believe in the head. The relationship with Jesus is just in the head. It's not in the relationship. So they don't abide in Jesus and then they cannot bear much fruit. Okay, so that's the 
the, uh, negative example. And the positive example is, that, is for people who have a close relationship with God, they will have strength from God, they will have joy from the Lord, and they will bear much fruit because their life will show and then people can see the life of God and th people are attracted to Him. And then the, the life is fruitful. They can influence many people. Okay, God's nature. God's nature is He he is a people lover. He loves people. And also, He's a source of life. He's a source of life. Wherever He is, He will cause people to bear fruit. He is a source of all kinds of fruits. Okay? And in His grace, He never despises any person. Whenever we come to Him, He for sure will come to us. And then He will stay in us. And then wherever He is, He will bear much fruit. He will he, his life will show fruits. He, has, he is full of fruit. He is full of joy and love and patience and kindness and compassion and kindness and wisdom and power. He is full of all kinds of fruits. So wherever He is, He will cause us to bear much fruit. So that's His grace. So when people have a close relationship with Him, they will be blessed. The whole life will be blessed. The whole life will be blessed with the blessings of God. And so that's the grace of God. And then He knows who sincerely comes to Him. He knows who sincerely prays to Him. He knows. And then when He knows that we are like that, then He will bless us. Okay? And then, uh, warning. Warning is for people who don't come too close to God, then God is far away from them. And also, when they don't abide in Jesus, they can do nothing. And also they are like branches that are cut off from the tree and then they will cast into the fire. So that's a warning. If a person has negative re relationship with God at all, negative relationship, then he cannot bear any fruit. His whole life is full of, you know, just prob problems, pr uh, personal problems problems in life instead of the blessings of God. So I encourage you to think about your life. Is a life full of the blessings of God, full of the presence of God, full of the fruit of God, or is it just full of responsibility and burdens and have to do this, do that? It's always responsibilities and always uh, uh, problematic relationship and, and fights and yelling. You know, if your life is like that because you don't have a close relationship with God. So all this is not just knowledge, but a close relationship with God and the reliance on, on God. Okay? So how? How can we have the close relationship with God? Uh, f first, have the faith that God really responds to us. He really responds to us. He always responds to us. And then clear the garbage. Is it laziness? Is it uh, that the way we pray is just you know uh, praying with uh, a shopping list, or is it uh, just we want something from God and we don't think of the good nature of God? We don't think of the blessings of God, His good, His goodness. So we're not motivated by His goodness. Uh, so and then um, how can we? build up, how can we have this fruit? Is to build up the relationship with God. To worship God in spirit and in truth. To have a close relationship with Him. Let God stay in us. Then wherever He is, He will bear much fruit. He will change our life. He will give us, you know, the more we come close to God, the more we'll enjoy coming to God. The more we'll enjoy life. And more we'll have fruit, have strength. And then specific things we do, specific things, okay? When I talk about how is clear the, clear the garbage and how to have a close relationship with God, to have strength from God. And then thirdly, specific things. Specific things like setting time apart for, to come close to God. Setting apart time to, uh, to read uh, or to meditate on the Word of God. To think about God's goodness, to appreciate Him, and to love Him in spirit and in truth. The whole person worship God. In spirit includes the soul, the soul includes the mind, the will, and the feelings. So worship God with the whole mind, 
the whole will and the whole feelings and also with the spirit and also pay attention to what we experience when we pray when we experience peace and joy we know that God is coming to us God is coming to us his presence is bringing bringing blessings his presence is bringing fruits in our life so we remember that so every time we come we pray we want to stay uh, we, we want to stay in uh, uh, to come to God in the same level so that we can experience his peace and love and joy every time we pray so that takes time but at least we have the peace when we put down the burdens we can have the peace of God every time we pray so these are specific things and then we, when we pray to God we really delight in Him that God is full of blessings count His blessings and, and appreciate God all the time I like God I appreciate God very much I'm happy with God I'm happy with everything about God so always appreciating God that way uh, then our relationship with God will become stronger and stronger okay so now we go to another passage and another uh, explanation of this method of preaching is uh, God gives us spiritual gifts supernatural spiritual gifts to help us in our ministry 1st Corinthians 12 8 for to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit to another faith by the same Spirit to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another discerning of spirits to another different kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues so here uh, the Bible here lists the different spiritual gifts that are here the gifts are mainly supernatural spiritual gifts from the Holy Spirit so we see that the uh, spiritual gifts of Holy Spirit includes supernatural gifts and it's very important that in this passage Paul never said well you have to use this gift quickly because soon uh, there will be no more such spiritual gifts on earth because there are people uh, the cessation theory that thinks that the spiritual gifts have stopped there is no more spiritual gifts after the early church so they say well uh, this passage uh, it doesn't apply to us but Paul when he explained these spiritual gifts he never said well one day you lose these spiritual gifts he never say that you lose them he was, you know he talks like this are spiritual gift that you can hunger for for so this apply to us and then the interpretation of explanation of these spiritual gifts word of wisdom would be that the person have the wisdom of God when he says things he's full of wisdom uh, and then words of knowledge could be first uh, knowledge of the Bible knowledge about people about the nature of people and also special knowledge about people that we don't uh, know ahead of time for instance the person might have some kind of sickness and we may not know but when when a person has this word of knowledge he knows this when he prays for the person uh, that uh, he senses that this person ha has a specific sickness now when we have this spiritual gift uh, don't use it like this oh God tell me that you have a, a certain sickness it's better to verify that we must ver verify that many many times thousands of times before we can be sure that this person has these uh, gifts uh, for sure so that he can use it more freely but even when, when he uses it freely don't use it as if he is a prophet don't say oh I declare to you that uh, you have this sickness or you know, I, I see that you have this sickness so so um, we need to um, uh, have wisdom how to use it okay uh, and then the wisdom is is something like this oh uh, so when we pray for this person and we say if we have a certain sickness we can bring it to God and God is happy to heal us and God will give us strength so uh, instead of saying uh, for instance the person has, has family problem instead of saying you have family problem we can say if we have family problems have 
uh, relational problem in the family, we can come to God and, and God can help us. God can heal our family. Okay? So that's a word of knowledge that knowledge of biblical knowledge or knowledge of certain uh, uh, of about people's nature or knowledge about uh, certain things about person that we do not know ahead of time. And also faith. Now here faith will not be just saving faith, but faith believe that God can perform miracles. God, God can use us to do great things. And then, and then gifts of healings that now we all uh, because in Matthew, um, Mark chapter 16, it says that, you know, the, the, these signs will follow those who believe, that, we, that to cast out demons in Jesus' name and also lay hands on the sick, they can be healed. So the Bible does talk about that all Christians have the, has healing. But some people have strong gifts of healing, that when they pray, that will be strong healing. So that's something... You know, if we notice that we have that, then we thank God for that, and then we want to use that more. And then working on miracles. Miracles include different kinds of miracles that, that we can do different things by the help of God. And then prophecy. Prophecy has two meanings. One is to prophesy things that's going to happen in the future. And then secondly is to prophesy to people according to the needs. You know, prophesy to people that uh, they need to repent or God is going to use them. Uh, so it's like preaching to the people, to their specific needs that, uh, that you need this. And then God is giving you this, uh, this help and blessings. And then discerning of spirits are people who have the gifts to discern the, uh, the evil spirit. Whenever there are evil spirit, they know what kind of evil spirit that is. And then different kinds of tongues. They can, they can speak the tongues and understand the, the, the mystery of God in First Corinthians chapter 14 is that it says that, uh, that speaking of tongues, uh, the tongues will, uh, th that we are speaking the mystery of God and also it will build up our spiritual life. And then also certain people interpretation of the tongues. Okay, now uh, the negative example are people who don't believe in the Holy Spirit's work. They don't believe that God can perform uh, miracles. They don't believe that God can give them supernatural spiritual gifts and they don't, they don't dare to use it. When they see someone sick, they don't dare to pray for them. Actually, when we see someone sick, we just pray. We don't have to promise them you'll be healed. We just pray. And, and when I pray for people, I, used to, I usually help them to come close to God and, and re believe in the goodness of God. God is blessing us. God is with us. God is helping us. God is blessing us. He is happy that we come to Him. So always build up the relationship with God by believing that when we come to Him, He is very happy. He is, ha he is smiling at us now because according to the Bible, He is rejoicing over us uh, with shouting. He is rejoicing over us with shouting. So that we have, you know, uh, that we have this confidence that God really res respond. So there are people who don't believe in this and then they don't serve God under the power of the Holy Spirit. And then there are people who serve God with the power of the Holy Spirit and they use their spiritual gifts and they can do great things. There are many people who pray for people and there are a lot of healings and a lot of transformation of people and accurate prophecy. So those are very helpful. And then God's nature, He is full of spiritual power. He is full of power and He, he is full of, uh, you know, the, the, and the spiritual gifts are all for blessing people, helping people, and building up the church. And then His uh, grace, He is happy to give to each one of us according to His plan. And each person will receive some spiritual gifts, each person, no matter how uneducated the person is. No matter how weak the person is, he can still receive spiritual gifts. But of course, if we have a close relationship with God, then the spiritual gifts will become stronger and stronger. For myself, I noticed that after I experienced the Holy Spirit, my spiritual gift in praying for people is much, much stronger. And my teaching also has become much stronger. And also how I counsel people, help people, and ability to change people, it all become much stronger. So, 
So I thank God for that, that He, he gives people the spiritual gifts to build up our life and our spiritual uh, uh, ministry. And then warning, warning to people that in the parable of five talents, two talents, and one talent, and the parable of and the person who has one talent buried the talent, and then he, uh, when Jesus comes back, he faces Jesus with empty, empty-handed, he's empty-handed, and uh, then he is the evil and lazy servant. So if we have zero fruit. We don't use our spiritual gifts at all. We don't serve God at all. The person can lose his salvation, that he's not saved. Okay, how? How? First, clear the garbage. Some people don't believe in spiritual gifts. They don't believe that God can give them supernatural spiritual gifts, so they don't receive that. So the first thing we receive that, we will say, God, I want it. I want these spiritual gifts. I, want, uh, I believe that you can give to me. And we want to clear the unf uh, lack of faith that God is miraculous God. God is almighty. He can give us ability to perform miracles. So we put down all our fear, our worry. Sometimes people fear that when they pray for people and they, they're not healed, and then they, are, they, uh, they, they feel that they, it's you know, disgraceful. Then people say, well, you pray for people and there's no result. So they fear. The result and then they dare not pray for people so that's clear the garbage and say no matter what happens I'll pray for people I'll serve God and then uh, how first to have strength from God the more we come close to God the more spiritual gifts we have and the spiritual gifts will become stronger and stronger that our spiritual gifts will come uh, that it's uh, that will grow in the spiritual spiritual gifts in praying for people or in word of knowledge or prophecy or discerning of spirits so when we pray more uh, come close to God more and then God will raise up these spiritual gifts in us and then we can do greater and greater things and God is very happy with us whenever we use these spiritual gifts to bless people God is happy with us and He'll bless us so clear the garbage have a close relationship with God and specifically how to do it like for instance uh, word of knowledge uh, that we'll pray for people and then we pay attention if God give us some thoughts about this person. Uh, sometimes we might feel pain on a certain part of the body which we don't normally have that maybe God is telling us there is pain uh, in that person in that area. And also faith that we exercise our faith and say that yes God can do that and I trust in God. So now Unless if you hear from God, God is going to heal the person in a specific way, we don't say you're healed. You know, some people say you're healed, but it's a fact that some people are not healed. Because in the Bible, even in the Bible, Paul said that he first went to uh, Galatia because he has sickness. And then uh, Timothy has, you know, a sickness many times, so therefore he can drink some wine. Uh, so there are people in the Bible that has, still have sickness. They, have, uh, uh, they are filled with the Holy Spirit. So it doesn't guarantee that we all have no sickness at all. So we cannot, unless if God tells us, we don't say, oh, your sickness is healed, and then nothing happens, and then that's disgraceful to God. And then uh, working on miracles. Uh, so when we have a certain situation, we just... Now it's very important when we pray for miracles or healing, we spend more time loving God and saying God is happy with us. God wants to bless us. I enjoy God and when I come to God, God is very happy. God is smiling at me and so I can rejoice in God. Thank you Lord, thank you Lord, you are very, you are very happy with me. You are you're staying with me. You are blessing me now. Thank you Lord, thank you Lord. So we, we, we believe that God is blessing us all the time, all the time He is blessing us. So have that faith uh, and then pray for people for healing and, and also pro prophecy we must test. We ha have thoughts that come to our mind, we can uh, check with the pastor or other people and whether what we receive is accurate or not. Instead of saying, I declare you from the Lord, you know, instead of saying that. Uh, 
And then discerning of spirit, when you notice that you send some spirits there, so we test that if that is correct. Or, or speaking of tongues and interpretation of tongues, we all test that, try that, and then see if we do have that gift, okay? So God bless you, we'll stop here. God be with you, and tomorrow I go for a mission trip for two days, a short mission trip. And God be with you, and if you have any question, please send to me, and do please send to me the photos of your group. Okay, God be with you and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you and thank you because you're full of grace and mercy. Help us to appreciate you, to see that you're full of grace and mercy and kindness and goodness. You have all kinds of grace prepared for us and you're very happy with us. When we come to you and serve you, you'll for sure reward us. You first transform our life. You give us a spiritual life, a new spiritual life, and you motivate us to obey you and serve you and then whenever we serve you, you are very, very happy. So Lord, help us to bear fruit according to your will, to serve you according to your will, to be willing to serve you and with the motivation from God's grace, that we are motivated by God's grace to serve you, to love you, to obey you. We know that God, you are happy with us when we serve you and then we can rejoice in the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord and enjoy God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're so good. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be with us. Give us motivation. Give us strength. Give us joy. Give us uh, strength and help us to be motivated by God's grace instead of motivation by the law. That we're not, you know, heavy burden, but rather we are rejoicing in you. We're enjoying you. Thank you.